Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Ready to Love, Season 9, Episode 6. Listen here, I need you to subscribe, like, share, comment. Also, we are also reviewing Love is Blind. Go check out that content. We got at least three episodes up of those. So, Blair, you ready for this episode? I'm ready. I'm ready too. Who went home? Koshia. No. She was not ready to love. While Koshia is saying her goodbyes, uh, Laurent says that he's going to text her. Mm. Why? <laughs> you didn't fight for me. He probably did. And he was arguing with me today. Don't text me. Oh, wow. Okay. Listen here. This is literally the feeling that I felt. I like Dag, the villain one. The <laughs> fact that Mike eliminated Koshia and things like that. Will did. Will. I keep saying, why do I keep calling him Mike? I don't know. Will. Yes. It's Will and William. Yes. Will. The fact that Will eliminated him. I was like, sometimes the bad guy wins. Mm -hmm. Because Will had no right, in my opinion, based on his interactions with these women and based on his insecurities that keep popping up, him sleeping on the floor and things of that nature, you shouldn't be eliminating nobody. Right. But, Koshia, Godspeed to you. Tommy tells everyone that this week they have to discuss their non-negotiables and the ladies have the power of elimination. Mm -hmm. Mika does not plan on changing her approach with these guys. So she is setting her ways. Mika, you don't like these guys, it seems like. No, it don't seem like it no, at all. She don't like any of these guys. She's just like, I'm on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, hey. Right. Well, Rashina and Justin go on a date. Mm-hmm. She takes him to go salsa dancing. Uh-huh. He is nervous. Yeah. They ended up getting into their flow. The teacher's teaching them, and it's, it's going pretty nice. Mm-hmm. They sit and talk after the class, and her non-negotiable is communication or poor communication. Yeah. She says, you got to speak up. You got to. He doesn't have a problem expressing himself. He just needs someone who makes it easy to talk about anything. And... He feels that Rashina is easy to talk to, mm-hmm. and she feels that Justin is rising on the top of her connection list. Listen, I she's like neck and neck. He's neck and neck with Chaz right now. I feel like Justin, you don't got to do much. Just, just things you don't have to do to be a good person on this show. You don't have to be like Lamar. You don't have to be like Will. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just by that alone. You already like top three, right? <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it it just seems like this this pool of men is just trash. It's piss in the pool. Yes, and and like a little turd floating around. In I there, think we so. got rid of the turd. That was Lamar. I think we I think we still got. Oh one yeah, more. Jonathan. Yeah, I think we, I think I think I think he had a turd moment last episode. He absolutely you know, did. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Alexis takes Chaz on a date. Okay. Which is kind of surprising to me because it didn't seem like they connected at all, mm-hmm. really. Um, he's been waiting a long time for Alexis, he tells her. Yeah. He felt bad about, co- well, first Alexis asked, how do you feel about that girl going home? Wait a minute. <laughs> he said he felt bad about Koshia going home because she was literally vulnerable earlier that day and mm-hmm. was crying. Alexis said it didn't bother her. Okay. You get what you get. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking about her? You're jelly. <laughs> Why are you talking about her on a date with Chaz? Your jelly. You should be focusing on you, focusing on the man in front of you, and building a connection. Why do you worry? Why are you worried about Koshia? She ain't even here. Ever, ever since Koshia said, "You got the body of a twelve-year-old girl," it stuck with her. It, it, listen here. <laughs> Some things do. You know how they say, like whenever you're in court and things like that, so, uh, a lawyer will say things knowing that. They're not supposed to say it, mm-hmm. and there's an objection, and that's when they say, strike that from the record. I can't unhear what I heard. Exactly. Your jury heard it. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. <laughs> so you can strike it for the record, but best believe my decision is swayed. Right. Koshia put that in my head, and when I see Alexis, especially since I don't like her personality, mm-hmm. and now I'm just looking at it, I'm like, Koshia, you shouldn't have put that in my head. <laughs> I can't strike that from the record, you know? <laughs> right. Go ahead. Well, Alexa shares with Chaz that during the ladies' lounge, things got heated mm-hmm. with her, and their personalities clash. Yeah. Here, Alexis go talking about what happened in the ladies' lounge. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and this has nothing to do with the em- elimination, giving Mm-mm. back feedback. Mm-hmm. She just over here just, just sharing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, cheating is a non-negotiable for him. Yeah. Chaz and Alexis say that they have shared values. Mm-hmm. And Chaz says, okay, well, I'll call you as mine. He just talking. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that means. Me neither. And he's giving her all these compliments. Uh, he didn't want to kiss Alexis because he's got a lot of connections mm-hmm. and he doesn't want to go around just kissing everybody. But she wanted a kiss. She did. She you, thought they were going to. You even seen her try to lean in a little bit. Yeah. Like, to like, see if he would take exactly. it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
I have a theory that I did not share with you while watching this. I have been a bad husband. What's your theory? My theory is because you said that it's weird that she went out with Chaz, Mm -hmm. right? She went out with Chaz to get at the women. Oh. Because I think that she knows that most of the women feel like Chaz is the most good looking. Okay. Right? So if she would have had a connection with Chaz or if she would have got Chaz to like her, because her, because my thing is, why didn't you use the time to go out with Will? Yeah, I you thought know, that was your guy. Or at least, you know what I'm saying? It's, come on now. You know <laughs> what I mean? But she used it to go after, quote unquote, the apple of the women's eye, mm-hmm. Chaz. And basically, so she could go back and say, me and Chaz connected. We even kissed. Right. We did all this. Look at me. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but. And I think she does come off as, as, as genuine. As genuine. Yeah. So she. Always an ulterior motive. Exactly. I feel like that's what she did because she's a pick me. You get what I'm saying? All right, call and, it. And she's like, guess who picked me? Guess who kissed me? So she could go to that woman's lounge and hold that up and be like, because she know most of those women don't like her. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's just my theory. I, I can I can get along with that. Thank you. Patrice sets up a date with Alonzo, William, and Vanessa. Okay. And this is really just a date for Patrice because Alonzo and William are into her. Anyway, so the guys are her top connections. Mm-hmm. She wants to see if they're going to fight over her. Mm. William has tried to reach out to Vanessa but never received a response. Mm-hmm. I'm be a little bit salty about that. Just a little bit. Alonzo um, knows that there's competition with William for Patrice, but he doesn't really think it's a real competition. Yeah, he thinks it's like, okay, yeah, I got this in the bag. Vanessa felt like Patrice was in a love sandwich and Vanessa was just in the audience. She mm-hmm. was like, I could have had my popcorn and been watching it just like the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vanessa thinks it's more likely for a man to fall in love at first sight. Alonzo feels he can put up with anything as far as his non-negotiables. He says mm-hmm. he doesn't have any. Okay. Vanessa's non-negotiable is poor communication. Mm-hmm. William needs a warm spirit, someone nice and understanding of his responsibilities as a father. Start right there. Niceness is a very undervalued personality trait that people do not put up top. Mm-hmm. Having someone who is nice to you, I like the word kind. Yeah. Right? Because kind to me is 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 an actual act. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Niceness, like I could be nice, but I cannot be kind to you. Right. And things like that. Um, I think what William is talking about, because I think William put that up about one spirit of niceness, you'd be surprised about how someone who can provide for you, someone who can even be there for you physically and things of that nature but they're not nice to you Mm -hmm. and it will make the whole living experience, the dating experience, the relationship experience, a living hell. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? So I really do like the fact because I ain't gonna hold you. I do get tired of everybody talking about their non-negotiables and everybody say, well, at least all the women saying communication, communication, communication. I like the fact that William said niceness because at the end of the day, I want someone who's nice to me that can make me want to be nice to them as well. Yeah, someone you can really genuinely get along with and have a good time with. Yes. And y'all not sitting up arguing. Yes. And, and tension in the house. Who wants to live like that? I won't. <laughs> so so um, he was adopted mm-hmm. himself. And mm-hmm. so his three sons are his closest blood relatives. Yeah. He also goes to the gym a lot. So fitness is important to him. Mm-hmm. And Vanessa is saying, well, with him going to the gym, like, I don't really know if he's going to have time for me like that. Mm. It's like, okay, Vanessa. William had uh, the wrong number, apparently, because mm. he tells Vanessa, you know, you didn't text me back. And she's like, yeah, there's a four that goes on the end of that. Question, dude, you think she gave him the wrong number or he typed it in wrong? I think he typed it in wrong. I don't think he had the full 10 digits for a phone number. And I don't think he realized it. Mm, I think because my thing is, uh, see, I don't ask people for their numbers. I just give them my number. Mm -hmm. That was my move. But I'm guessing that he gave her the phone and told her to put it in because I'm like, because she because she showed him the he showed her the digit and she was like, it's a four. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, maybe he put the wrong number in. Maybe he misheard. Um, I would think like maybe sooner you would have um talked to her. You've seen yeah, her multiple times. Exactly. So yeah. like like you know he had the wrong number, but you know it yeah. is what it is. Well, now that he has the right number, he's talking to her and he's like, you know, maybe we can grow a connection or something. And Vanessa feels like that time has passed. Yeah, I'm about to say yeah. <laughs> 
Well, Mika invited Dominique to a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. At first, she thought he was short and not her type, but he seems like a great guy and he has a way of making her open up. That sounds like a woman who was on the brink of elimination. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, because he (laughs) he definitely did not get shorter (laughs) or or, or taller, rather. Mm -hmm. He didn't get taller and he haven't changed the way he talked. Right. And he's the one that wants 10 kids and she don't want no kids. So, so what I, are we doing here? <laughs> Mika, I know your game, sweetheart. Yeah. She asks what he thinks about the ladies having the power this week. He says he feels fine because he thinks he's one of a kind. Okay. Her non-negotiable is not having a sense of humor. Dominique says his is if she can't cook and if she's not compromising. Mm-hmm. The no kids thing would also be a challenge for him. And Mika tells him that she hasn't been in love with someone who would make her want to have more kids. Mm -hmm. And Dominique feels like her stance is shifting on the kids, but because before she was clearly like, no, I don't want any, Mm -hmm. but it seemed like if she meets the right man, then she might be open to Mm. it. Mika shares um, that she has a connection with Justin. Dominique thinks that he and Mika would vibe. I want to say one thing about Mika. Go ahead. Um, Her attitude, Mm. it just comes off as uninterested. And it seems like she wants to be chased. Mm-hmm. which fine you can be however you want to be but mm-hmm. i don't think this is the setting for that mm-hmm. i think this is the setting for building and growing as many connections so people keep you safe but like she said she's not going to change her approach she's not going to change how she talks to the guys mm-hmm. anything like that so i think she will be going home soon i don't think she's going home soon mm-hmm. um huh. here's the thing about mika I don't know what her goal is because it's not love. Okay. I even went on her social media page to see if she's selling something. Because mm-hmm. so usually, like, you know how some people come on here to grow, they grow their their brand, their mm-hmm. brand. So I'm like just, Maya. I mean, Maya's doing that. You know, what I but mean, I think she's there for love too. But but mm-hmm. I don't know that about that. But um, I'm like I don't know what her because even when you said it, because she even said, "What did you say? You said like she had a connection with Justin too." Yeah. My whole thing is. You are so stern and so determined to not be with anybody who wants children. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, A, for you to, quote unquote, because uh, Dominique, I feel like he was being passive in a way when he told about his uh, non-negotiables. Oh, yeah. He said someone who is not compromising. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And it's surprising he's with on a date with Mika. Right. You get what I'm saying? Well, she compromised her values of not having a kid anymore because she already have two. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Um, I just don't see it for them. Yeah. Um, to me, they both can go home. Mm-hmm. Not together. But I feel like he I feel like some episodes you have to ask me, is Dominique there? Yeah. Because he he haven't spread himself. I feel like he's missed some of the men's lounges too. It, it, yeah. it, I just feel like he's ever like, Oh yeah, he is on the show. Um I just feel like they are only investing in each other and it's not even like a match. I feel like they both doing the lease on their part. Dominique's doing the lease on his part. Mika's doing the lease on her part as a contestant on this show. All right. Well, Maya goes on a date with Justin. Yeah. They are both from Mississippi. Okay. And she likes someone who is family oriented. Mm -hmm. They both want kids. Yeah. Which is a different tune from what Justin was saying (laughs) to Mika. He said that he would be willing to not have kids um, at this age if the woman he's with doesn't want kids. Mm -hmm. But in this conversation, he says, oh, yeah, I want kids. Definitely. Yeah. So and they're both ready to settle down. Her not having kids is a green flag for him. Mm -hmm. Maya's connection. um, Maya's also connecting with William. Mm -hmm. But Justin says, you know, we just got to knock William out the top. The date was a success. Mm. What did you think about that? Just, just, just I honestly think that they could be good together. Mm. I really do. I really do. Um, my only thing with Maya, and I could be totally wrong, Uh-oh. but I don't know if she wants to date a PE teacher. Oh, like a a, a like a, I feel like a she middle would... school, elementary school gym teacher. Right. I feel like she might want somebody who has a little bit more accolades or status maybe. status you, you know what i'm saying or money and maybe that could be me just looking at her and she's like beautiful well put together and she has her own business so i just feel like she she might not be comfortable being with somebody like that maybe we have to see how successful her business is because you have a business don't mean like you're selling 
that's true. And but I feel like a lot of people in that mindset like want this picture of a person. Sometimes. I understand that, but if mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm bringing home a consistent check. And it's more than those waist trainers that you selling and things like that. Don't look at me. Don't look down at me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I was talking to one of my friends and things like that. Mm-hmm. And she was, this was years ago. And she was talking about how she would never date a plumber or she, or she'd never date like any type of guys in those trades. But right now, People, trades make but, good but money. right now mm-hmm. there's a shortage on plumbers. And she basically said she wants a guy who makes six figures. I said, well, you know, plumbers make six figures. There's, there's actually was this contract to where they was like, hey, we need plumbers. We will start you off with $110,000 with a like $10,000 signing bonus. Wow. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But they don't want the quote unquote six figures. They want the status with the six figures. Right. I want the entrepreneur six figure guy, not the one that deal with boo boo six right. figure guy. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So that leads to your point to where. He may make the money, but he may not have the job status mm-hmm. that um that will make them look like a power couple. Right. And maybe yeah. that's where I'm getting it from. Maybe it's not just because her I think, appearance. I think I heard her Because she that. did say mm-hmm. power couple. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, what does that look like to you? To some people, it could be two employed individuals yeah. who have a great life and are able to go on vacations a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. And for some people, it means a million dollar lifestyle. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I think you took a big swing. Hopefully, you're right. If you're not right, we did this whole segment for nothing. <laughs> okay. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Yeah, exactly. Rashina set up a date with Jonathan mm-hmm. and Will for them to make body butter. Will thinks Rashina's cool and he's open, but yeah. he's really only seeing it for Alexis. Mm-hmm. Uh, the teacher plays a sound ball, sound bowl, and Jonathan felt it was a little bit too loud, it a little bit loud. too much in his ear. It was kind of loud for the TV too. She asked him uh, them to make a scent that they think represents her, and she's going to make a scent that kind of is like a combination of both of them. Hmm. So <laughs> don't do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so they do that. They make their body butters, kind of rubbing it into. Uh, well, Will was rubbing it into her skin. Jonathan was rubbing his own hands together with the L- body butter. Listen, he, <laughs> fool me once, shame on me. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm not touching nobody. I'm not doing anything on anybody this episode. No, I just rub it on myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jonathan, I think it's a little too late for you, brother. Right. You know. Well, Will needs someone uh, who has faith in God. Mm-hmm. Rashina's non-negotiables are trust, lying, um, and no commitment. Yeah. Jonathan thinks that Rashina's a cool person, but he's a quiet guy, Mm -hmm. and he doesn't like to reveal too much. Mm. He kind of plays off his non-negotiables by saying, you know, he he doesn't want somebody who smokes, Mm -hmm. and he needs to know if she's able to change oil. Yeah, like, the thing about it is they they ask him what is his non-negotiables, and he don't want to answer. Yeah. He just want to be Mr... Secret guy, Mr. 007. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mr. James Bond. It's, like, bro, you have to give and take. Yeah, you got to share something. Exactly. Yeah. Well, he leaves. He mm. says he's got somewhere to be. Okay. So, Will and Rashina are left. And Will is really drilling her with questions. And he asks her how she would re- would support her ideal man. Mm. And she says any way he needs support. He asks... Who do you feel you are least connecting with? And she says, Laron. Mm. Well, I don't know how the question about Laron is going to help you get to know her better. But I think that's Will being like his girlfriend, Alexis, and just being chatty and gossipy. Mm. Why do you care who her least connection is with? Okay. Do you want a connection with her or not? Let's see here. I don't understand why these guys don't understand the concept of the show. The women got the power this week. <laughs> like, like, I don't really get it. He put himself in a position of power by drilling into her. I'm like, bro, what? Man, I don't understand it. Maybe these guys have watched the show before. I don't know. Mm. Well, we are in the ladies' lounge. Yeah, yeah. Alexis isn't looking forward to the mean girl, catty women. Uh-oh. She plans to buck back and mm-hmm. say what's on her mind. She will not be a doormat like how the situation was with Koshia. And the ladies go ahead and discuss their dates. You realize she said that to us. She didn't say that to them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So only thing that really stood out to me was um, Alexis was talking about her date. And she said how she and Chaz almost kissed. And Mika thought it was weird how Alexis said that she and Chaz almost kissed. Mm -hmm. Because almost doesn't count. Mm -hmm. So why are you even saying that? That supports my theory, right? (laughs) She wanted something to take back to the women to get the women all like, the guys is on me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Mika's like, listen here, I don't like you. That's that, that, that's basically what Mika said. Yeah. And guess what? We will 
and I'm speaking for me because Blair don't like to be on my side. <laughs> we will remember Koshia throughout the rest of this season on this side of the table. I will least. agree with that. We because I, I I liked Koshia. She's I all did right too. With me. We thought she was Tranquilla. Tranquilla. Yeah, Tranquilla. Quilla Quilla. Mm-hmm. We thought she, that was 2.0. She's not. No. She's a woman of standard. It's a little weird. You know, on first day, expect her to lean in on you. Lean back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but other than that, I am on your side, Koshia. We will make sure that Alexis is gone from this show by next episode. We will see to it. Oh, all right. Mind you, it's already recorded. It's already done. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I... I, I haven't done it in a while. I feel like there will be a pink slip, uh, uh, a pink slip Saturday mm. for Alexis. We hope next week I can bring out the pink slips and give her her walking papers. All right. Because Alexis, we are tired of you. Mika's tired of you, and we will get rid of you next week. That's just how I feel. Okay. Well, the ladies feel Jonathan isn't open. Oh yeah. Patrice says. Saying things discussed in the lounge shouldn't happen. Mm. And she knows that Alexis wants to protect these guys. Mm -hmm. And she felt a way how Will approached her and tried to check her Mm -hmm. for what she said in the ladies' lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexis said that she had to give him examples and feedback for him to work on. Uh Uh-huh, go ahead. Mika chimes in and says, you're the only one who talks to him. We know it was you. And Patrice felt like Alexis probably said her name, but Alexis didn't say her name. No. He did go around asking everybody. Mm-hmm. But I feel like most people probably didn't remember because they didn't care to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexis is like, look, I have no control over how he reacts, um, but I told him because he needed feedback during eliminations. Listen here. The one was getting a little riled up. Yeah. And Tom like, hey, 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 hey. Everybody's on their own journey. I'm like, <laughs> T- Tommy, what? What? Tommy just want to get to his lines and get to his little baseball he so had he in, his, go home. in his back pocket he had the whole time and things like that. Listen, the women don't like Alexis and they don't like Will. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, Mika could confidently say when she speaks, I feel like she's kind of speaking for everybody. She's like, hey, you're the only one that talks to Will. Yeah. We don't like this boy who sleep on the floor. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like anything that comes off of that, we know it came from you. That's what happens. Like you said, Tommy says everyone is on their own journey. Yeah. If we blend them, things will get messy. And he says, so let's move on. Yes, he ain't say nothing. <laughs> he just got them to be quiet. Mm-hmm. So he says that there is going to be a curveball this week and two of the men will be eliminated tonight. Mm. The three men in the bottom are Will, William, and Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Jonathan apologizes to Alexis again. Apparently he apologized like he called her whatever yeah. about the pajama party. Mm-hmm. Alexis shares that the women don't think he's open mm-hmm. and he doesn't want to share info just for things to potentially not work. What? And Vanessa is out with Will and she tells him that the ladies thinks he's chatty. Mm-hmm. He disagrees. A little chatty patty. Mm-hmm. That's worse than a guy could be. The ladies get the friend vibe from William, and he says it's unnatural for him to pursue multiple women. And apparently some of his non-negotiables don't work for some of the women, like going to the gym. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) But I'll tell you one thing. You don't need to go to the gym at midnight. Go to the gym at one one in the morning. Yeah, you said That's go suspicious. at midnight. I said do not. Do not. No. That is my favorite time. Find another. Home. Find another time of the day because that that feels suspicious to me. I. It's it's empty. Nobody's there. If you go at eight o'clock in the evening, it's it, empty at that time. It's too. not. It's not that empty. Okay. It's not. It's not that empty. It's not as empty as I want it to be. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. The ladies decide that Will and Jonathan are not ready to love. I hear all the audience that's watching this right now (laughs) clapping with me. Yeah, I mean, finally. Finally, the Avengers came through just a week (laughs) too late. But I understand. Well, we we, we did not like you. No. Okay, from the first episode to this episode. And Jonathan, you did yourself in when you was Mr. Uh, Freaky Man. Okay? And Mr. Incognito. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to share anything. So so what you here for? Go back home to your ex-wife right you know what i'm saying not baby mama mm-hmm. go back to your ex-wife who still want a relationship with you for all we know we you're probably still married for all you we know because you over here keeping things secret too how did you feel about justification coming through this week? i am just glad the ladies made the right decision yes. both of these guys were very much into alexis very much not into getting to know anybody else and alexis didn't seem to be that much into them really to oh, be honest boy. 
and she seems like she's going after Chaz, which I don't think that's going to work. I think Chaz and Vanessa really have a, a good bond. Mm-hmm. I think Chaz was telling her the right thing so that he can keep the favor of the women exactly. and continue on from week to week so he can be with Vanessa. I think he thought it was so. weird that she asked him for, on a date. Yeah, I yeah. think he thought it was weird that she felt they were going to kiss. Like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just want to respect all connections. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if that was Vanessa... Maybe he would have gave her a little peck on the cheek. I feel like they probably did when she stayed back at the house. Oh yeah, I think I think he I think he was kissing her hand or something. They, like, they was close. They was real close. So I think when the cameras left, they might have got a little kissy kissy. Listen here, man. Anything else on this episode before I touch on next week's episode? That's all I got. Laron, I'm with your brother. I'm not a big fan of Laron and things like that, but next week I will be. Because we are going to get this witch out, as he said it. <laughs> he said, we got half of the snake. We're going for the other half. We're going for the other half. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Alexis, count your days. Trust me. You are enemy number one on both lounges. And I want to say one thing about the lounge. She got into saying something to Mika about pretty much like, because Mika was like, none of us talked to Will. And she's like, well, I don't know why, he, you know, he doesn't like you and he doesn't like you. And, you know, I can't explain why he don't like y'all mm-hmm. and all this type of stuff. Like, you're making it seem like it's a prize for Will to like somebody. This millionaire. <laughs> Who sleep on the ground. Dude, like, the way she puts these guys on the pedestals is just very odd to uh, me. Alexis, how she speaks of them. You will go like, home. And guess what? You might as well start a review channel from the episode you get eliminated from. And and listen, I'm happy that we go get you out next week. If the women can vote women off, <laughs> Alexis will be gone. Tell me what y'all think about Alexis in the comment, what y'all think about the season so far. Anything else on this episode, Blair? That's all I got. Y'all be good. See y'all next week. Bye.